monopoly to oligopoly of violence, an exploration of four point hypotheses regarding organized organic militia in Kenya. This study was conducted by myself and my colleague, Dr. Katumanga. We are releasing this in April 2014. What did we set out to do? Three things. One, to conduct a national census on gangs and militia groups in Kenya. Two, to determine their levels of arms and ammunition. And three, to establish the relationship between these gangs, the police, and the terrorist groups in Kenya. A research design, we did a total of 8,000 interviews, harassments in 15 counties over two years. We deployed a workforce of 250 research assistants and enumerators across the 15 counties, and the results were subjected to tabular and cross tabular, including regression analysis. And we also collected GPS coordinates of militia groups, so we are able to locate them wherever they are using the coordinates. Our six point findings, which are really the summary of the gist of our results, the conclusions. One, radicalized gangs or groups are not a result of police absence, they are a result of police abstinence. And that is because the police are key partakers of crime, period, nothing more than that. Number two, Al Shabaab is overrated. They are successful in Kenya because of rented terrorism. They rent terrorists from local militia groups and criminal gangs. So if you fix the local gangs, you will end up fixing Al-Shabaab. Number three, between the police and the militia, who is, who is wagging who? Is the dog wagging the tail or is the tail wagging the dog? According to our findings, the militia are actually wagging the police. Conclusion number four, an axis of evil has emerged. It is a fellowship of three. That is the chief, the police, and the women. The idea of feminization of crime is a new frontier in gang business in Kenya. A lot of women criminals, and they are right at the core of these militia groups, according to our findings. Number five, for every organized militia, there is an organic militia to counter it. We call this a law of gang polarity. An organic militia are seen as good, organized militia are seen as bad. Last conclusion, confidence in the judiciary has dropped from the status of being hero to that of being zero. The poor have more confidence in organic militia compared to the judiciary. They say the militia give them quick justice compared to the expensive judicial process, which they're not even sure will deliver justice to them. Those being the broad findings, what then are the specific findings? Regarding gang, gang or militia uh, census, one, a total of 238 militia groups were counted in the 15 counties we visited. And these were categorized into three, the what we call the hardcore militia, these are the militarized groups like Al Shabaab, the so called militia, which are the marketized groups that get rented by the groups like Al Shabaab, and these are groups like Mongiki, Kamjesh, Talk Disciples, etc. And what we are calling the no core groups, and these are gangs in formation, which are largely patronized by the police. But how widespread are these militia groups across the country? Every four kilometers, whichever direction you go in Kenya, you will encounter a gang or militia of sorts. Every one kilometer out of every four, you will be able to encounter such groups. These groups are of two types. They are the organic groups. These are created by communities to protect them from criminal gangs. For instance, there was a group known as the Hague in Kenya, which was constituted to protect community against Mongiki. But later, it became a criminal gang itself. But originally, it emerged as an organic militia group. Then, of course, the organized militia groups are those ones with uh, criminal activities. And these are also the ones that are actually rented by the terrorist radicalized groups. 
Regarding police militia ratio, for every 100 militia members, there are only 20 policemen. This means that the ratio of police to militia is 1 to 5 in favor of militia groups. Out of every five gangs, gang or militia members, there is only one policeman. This is essentially what this ratio means. So policing then becomes extremely difficult. Regarding militia and gun, gun permeation, out of every 20 armed policemen, there are 30 armed gun members, which means that the gun ratio is 2 to 3 in favor of militia members. But we must add here also that militia groups are not as organized as the police, so they cannot overpower them. And one other thing we found out is that the police are also said to rent out some of their guns to these militia groups for criminal activities. Regarding militia and police symbiosis, one out of every four policemen works in cohorts with gangs or militia groups. And the police symbiosis in militia is, as I had indicated in our results, is as a result of absence as opposed to abstinence. An absence is where the police are not present. An abstinence, the police are there, but they refuse to work because they are either overpowered or overwhelmed by militia groups or they are partakers of crime themselves. This concept we call distance decay. Okay? The closer you are to a chief's camp, or a police station, the higher the likelihood that you will encounter an attack by criminal groups because of this relationship the police have with these particular gangs. And the closer the attack is to a chief's camp, the higher the likelihood that the police response will be suboptimal. This is probably because of the competition between the police and the chief regarding militia activities. Now having said that, what are the militia profiles of some of the counties that uh, we came up with? I begin with the militia groups of Mombasa. Mombasa groups have changed significantly with the coming in of uh, Al-Shabaab. But the critical ones, as we saw when we were there doing research work over this period of time, is a group known as MRG, which we think has died away. That's the Mombasa Republican Guard. But what is interesting is its counter force, which is Sungu Sungu. Everywhere we had MRG, there was a counter gang known as Sungu Sungu, which is different from the Sungu Sungu or uh, Kisi. But the radicalized and the no core militia groups constitute 50% of the total gang ratio in Mombasa. The Nairobi militia groups. The main groups in Nairobi are Mumbiki, Taliban, Kamjesh and Sungu Sungu. So when we talk about rented terrorism, these are some of the groups we need to focus on and ask ourselves, are they working in cahoots with Al-Shabaab and some of the rented, are some of the groups that seem to rent them? But Nairobi, we discovered that Mungi is the most dominant group. Its share of crime is 43%. But what was also interesting is that 40% of Nairobi residents say that Mungiki is not necessarily an illegal group that actually it provides certain services to them. But there are the smaller groups like Mukunji Pressure, the 42 Brothers, Siafu, and the 12 Disciples, basically operating in Kibera. The militia groups of Nakuru. Mungiki, of course, is the most dominant group in Nakuru, accounting for 51% of the market share. An interesting statistic here is that if 5% of the residents of Nakuru say that they do not think Mungiki was actually an illegal group, that it had some kind of community legitimacy. And this is probably as a result of the post-election violence that we experienced in 2008, February. So here are the colors of the different groups of uh, Nakuru, as you can see them. SLDF is an interesting one, Chingororo, you can see it. Vigilante groups are there. Canadian warriors are also part of cocktail or militia groups in Nakuru. The militia groups of Kisumu, the dominant group here is Baghdad Boys, although for some reason the Kisumu crime market has also been infiltrated partly by Angola Msumbiji and also by Mungiki. And the no cop militia groups are also overwhelming Kisumu.
And here are the details of the statistics. You can see the 42 brothers there, Baghdad boys. The vigilante groups and the NOCO militia groups are the ones supported by the rogue elements within the police force. The militia groups of Kakamega. This was interesting because there was a curious return of Angola Musumbiji in Kakamega. And what was interesting is that well as in Kakamega, Angola Musumbiji was seen as a legitimate group, in Kisumu it was seen as illegitimate. And, and, and the, the group that was seen as legitimate in Kisumu was the, the Baghdad boys. But there are other groups in Kakamega apart from Angola Musumbiji. Here they are. Baghdad boys is present there. Vigilante groups are there. Kamjesh is also present in Kakamega. The militia groups of Wasingishu, of course, the significant ones here are Mungiki and Kanijin warriors. Although we also saw a bit of presence of SLD, especially as a split, as a sleeper cell uh, of the, the Mount Elgon group, but now has traveled into Wasingishu and operating them. Here are the details of the different groups. You can see King Goro there. SLDF Taliban, Mungiki has a big market share there, as you can see. And the Kalenjin warriors are also an important group in this particular place. The militia groups of Transoya, SLDF, of course, is the biggest. And what is interesting is that although it was decimated by KDF, there are still a number of sleeper cells of people who have organized themselves and calling themselves SLDF. And here are the details. But once again, you can see the no-core militia groups are big. These are groups that are colorless and we think are supported by the police. But also the police reservists are also a critical group here. And we don't know whether some of them are rogue or others are actually serious uh, uh, reservists. We make two recommendations only. One, the police and the gangs are joined at the hip. And this also means, by extension, the rented terrorism. There's a link that goes directly to the police, including supply of some of the things that they require for purposes of carrying out terrorist activities. And therefore, you cannot get rid of one without radically changing the other. And to resolve the gun crisis, therefore, you must start with the police. The second thing is that there is a security vacuum that is seem, seem to be filled by organic militia groups, which are also providing for uh, certain justice or court facilities that uh, the judiciary is unable to provide for. In our thinking, these particular groups should be brought up, be brought out rather, and should be incorporated in the court uses systems, for instance, under the Majumba Kumi initiative. There's no point making any other recommendations at this particular moment in time.